Node.js library Fastify is blazing fast! Testing with Wallaby? Blazingly fast. Yeah, but have you seen my Go library, Syslog? Blazing fast parsers. Structured logging in Go. Blazing fast! Oh yeah? Super fast, all natural JSON logger. Is it free range? Grass fed? Does it do CrossFit? Actix web server? In Rust? Blazing fast. 21st century terminal? Blazingly fast! All right, so every single language is blazingly fast. So how do we know which language is blazingly fast? So if you remember from my last video, we found that Node.js and TypeScript were not necessarily blazingly fast, but the majority of the time we were actually doing syscalls and we were not testing the language itself. And I know, sure, Go was superior, but is it actually superior or is it, are we just testing the wrong thing? And so this video aims to address how much better is Rust, is Go, or is TypeScript at being blazingly fast? So what are we gonna build? Well, we built a very simple game that will run 60 ticks on the server. At least try to run 60 ticks on the server. So the game that's played on the server is actually pretty simple. It is gonna be two players that verse each other and each one has a fire rate. Now, obviously the player with the faster fire rate is simply going to win every time. They receive a, hey, ready up, and hey, it's start to play the game command. Upon playing the game command, they start firing as fast as possible. And of course, the one with the faster fire rate will win. Now, once a player's been hit, the game's over and we report out the stats for each round. So I created a simple game loop that would run the game. It would first check for any new fire commands. It would check for collisions. Then it would check for the end of the game. Now, sometimes these were good loops. They actually went fairly fast within the acceptable amount of time. But every now and then they exceeded the amount of time they should have ran, meaning that we were unable to process the loop because other games were running. Something else was taking the CPU. And of course, when we had all these results at the end of the game, we would take these and bucket them into good bucket, less good, less good, and so on. And then we'd report these results down via the winner, and I'd be able to take all these results, put them together, and see how well did my server handle 200 games being played, 400 games being played, 600, 800 games being played? Of course, 800 games being played would be 1,600 connections. So, of course, we collected data on all three servers. Yes, all three servers. TypeScript being obviously blazingly fast. Go blazingly fast and rust the most loved language and the obviously least used language, but clearly proclaimed to be the fastest of all the languages. Now, here's the deal. When I did this, I had a few surprises, okay? I think you might be pleasantly surprised when you see these results. So let's find out which one is blazingly fast. As described earlier, we bucketed all the frame performances and then counted them. I summed all of them together and presented them kind of in this little bar graph. Now, I would, I'd like you to look at these and I'd like you to kind of in your head guess which one's which. Now remember, we want the biggest blue bar. The biggest, most girthy blue bar is the winner of this competition. Karen, it is completely fine to have a big blue bar and to expose it on YouTube. All right, so let's zoom in on this first one. This first one is actually TypeScript. And yes, it actually did this good with 1,600 connections or 800 games being played. Only 46.1% of the time were the frames within 16 to 17 milliseconds, giving this the full rating of not blazingly fast. Come on in, TypeScript. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sit down. Uh, you lying to me? You think I'm funny? You think I'm a clown? Well, get the hell out of here. Yeah. Get out! Yeah, I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> we got a lot of work to do. So if you look at these next two, you're going to go, well, they actually look fairly similar. Well, hold on, guy. First off, this one is only 99.2% of the time within acceptable range for a 60 tick server. And this one's within range 99.8% of the time. Clearly domination going on right here. Now, remember, the servers we ran on were single core. So there was no multi-threaded paradigm win here. It just simply was servers contending for a single CPU trying to process these messages as fast as possible. Now, this is Golang. That one is Rust. The thing that surprised me about this was how well Golang actually did. Because remember, it is garbage collected. And we are just doing a lot of running going on right here. Whereas I was kind of promised how fast Rust was. So this was actually kind of like a big shock to me. Because writing the Rust server 
was demonstrably harder. If you tuned into any of the Twitch streams, it was twice as long the run the Go one. In fact, the Go one was my fastest one written out of TypeScript, Rust, and Go. And Go is my least familiar language. That should say a lot of things right there. That I was able to write tests that helped me prove it was correct. And on top of that, do it the fastest with the least experience. Go is incredible. But the problem with this test is that it's single core. And now that we got TypeScript out of here, goodbye TypeScript, we actually have the chance to increase the cores and really see what happens as we do that. Is my programming awesome? Ha is Rust going to be better than Go? Because this is where I assume Rust is going to to really start dominating in the paint. Well, actually, no. Um, I don't know what happened. So for the next part of this experiment, we did just Go versus Rust because it'd be too hard to upgrade the TypeScript version to make it run on multiple cores. So what I did is I had four separate machines within the Linode cloud make 800 connections each, whereas I made a little bit more connections from my home machine, and I would measure how well are the frames actually happening. So every single time one of my web sockets would have a completed game, it would report back down the results and I'd be able to measure it. Now, the main thing I actually started looking for was not how well were the frames doing, because it's still same thing, almost all perfect, but how many active games were played. Now, this was really surprising when I saw the results. Red is rust. Blue is Go. Go was able to handle the load really well. And I attribute this to how simple the concurrency model is. It is so easy to write good Go. Whereas Rust, I obviously am not that good at writing it. Now, the Rust version took me about five times as long as the Go version. And I really just didn't want to keep sinking time into it. I just was like, forget about it. Right? And at this point, the Rust version is terrible. Why would I even use it? Why would I even try to make this better? The Go one performed almost identically well with significantly less effort. And when put under a vertical scale, performed Mwah! beautifully. That means this server was handling about 4,500 to 4,900 connections at any one time. About 99% of the time, the frames were within that 16 to 17 millisecond budget. So it was running very smooth. Of course, if you want to see any of this code, it's available. It will be linked down below. I'm going to be doing more just Rust versus Go versus TypeScript kind of talking and illustrating the differences of how development process really works on Twitch. Link down below. And of course, the Discord still actually filled with degenerates somehow. Yeah, Twitch and discord come on in yeah come on into the office yeah you gotta quit asking for feed pics okay no i will not cover them in coconut oil i will not be sending you evening feed pics it's actually rather ridiculous okay i'm busy just trying to get feed pics from my wife and here you are asking for me every single day i can't do that so get out get the hell out of here so if you like this kind of content i am willing to produce more about every 10 minutes of video is about 80 hours of research so if you like it just you know press the like button make a comment hit subscribe it actually does send the signal to me that you like this content and you want me to make more of it now i would actually like to make some more like usability videos like how is actually using Go versus using JavaScript versus using Rust. Which one should you choose? If you like that idea, make a comment, give me some suggestions. I enjoy using these languages. And of course, everything will be handcrafted and free range on Twitch. So get on in, baby. Oh yeah, Pick's gonna love this one.